Hey there, fellow warriors of the gaming realm and diaper kingdom. If you're watching this hunched over your phone in the bathroom because it's the only quiet place in the house, you're in the right spot. Welcome back to Gamer Dads, where we somehow managed to reach max level while maintaining minimum sleep. Before we dive into the most epic games hitting our screens this November, smash that subscribe button harder than your kid smashes their sippy cup on the floor. And hey, hit that notification bell. Trust me, it makes way less noise than your children's toys. Today, we're looking at 10 upcoming games that you might actually get to play. You know, the bedtime goes smoothly for once. And stick around for number four. It'll make those precious 2 a.m. gaming sessions totally worth the next day zombie parent mode. So let's begin. Starting off with number 10, let's talk about Empire of the Ants. Finally, a game that understands what it's like managing a colony of chaotic beings who never listen to instructions. Based on some fancy novel by Bernard Weber, yeah, I didn't know about it either. I'm too busy reading Goodnight Moon for the thousandth time. This RTS puts you in charge of an ant colony, which honestly feels like great training for parenthood. The developers are promising that every decision matters, kind of like when you're choosing between five more minutes and bedtime right now. Except here, you're commanding an army of insects instead of negotiating with a stubborn four-year-old. They're claiming the AI is super sophisticated, which sounds great until you realize these ants probably listen better than our kids do. Coming to PC on November 7th, perfect for those nights when the kids are actually asleep and you can pretend you're in charge of something that follows orders. Number nine brings us Lego Horizon Adventures. Look, I know what you're thinking. Great, more Lego on my floor. But hear me out. This is actually the perfect game to play with the kids when you're too tired to build real Lego towers for the 15th time today. What's wild is that Sony's actually letting this one hit the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, you heard that right. They're bringing Aloy's world into the Lego universe, complete with cooperative multiplayer. Finally, a way to hunt robot dinosaurs without explaining to your partner why the kid is now scared of the Roomba. The open world exploration and puzzle solving might not be what you expect from Horizon, but let's be honest. Anything that lets us game with the kids while still getting our open world fix is a win. Landing on PC, Switch, and PlayStation on November 14th, just in time for those family bonding sessions we're always promising. At number eight, we've got Mirthwood. This medieval fantasy RPG lets you choose between saving the world or just living a quiet farming life. Basically, the same choice we make every morning between being a responsible adult or hiding in the pantry eating snacks. The detail in this game is insane. We're talking lush forests, tranquil villages, and dungeons that somehow still look less scary than your kid's room at the end of the day. Every NPC has their own life and schedule, which is more organization than my entire household has managed in years. You can follow the main quest line if you're feeling heroic or just farm, trade, and build your community. Kind of like how some days you're a super parent handling everything, and other days you're just trying to keep everyone alive until bedtime. Dropping on PC November 6th, this one's perfect for when you want to escape to a world where schedules actually mean something. Let's talk lucky number seven. Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. This long-awaited sequel is finally shambling our way, looking prettier than your partner on date night thanks to Unreal Engine 5. You're a scavenger in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, which is basically like searching for your kid's favorite toy at the bottom of the toy box. Dangerous, potentially radioactive, and you're definitely going to find things you forgot existed. They've added all sorts of fancy features like dynamic weather and a day-night cycle. But let's be real. After dealing with real-world toddler tantrums, no mutant is gonna scare you. The AI supposedly got a big upgrade, making enemies more unpredictable, though I doubt they're as unpredictable as a three-year-old deciding what they want for lunch. Hitting PC and Xbox series on November 20th, it's your chance to experience a different kind of survival horror than the usual why is the house so quiet scenario. At number six, Metro Awakening. Brings us back to post-apocalyptic Russia, 
proving that some game developers really understand what our living rooms look like after the kids' five minutes of playtime. The game's promising enhanced tactical combat with improved AI, which sounds great until you realize you've already mastered tactical warfare, getting your kids to eat vegetables. We're getting new above ground and below ground locations to explore, more survival mechanics and limited resources. Basically like trying to make it through a long car ride with only one iPad and two kids. The story's supposed to be gripping, but after negotiating bedtime stories with a four-year-old, I think we can handle any plot twist they throw at us. Landing on PC November 7th, just in time for that sweet spot between uh, kids are finally asleep and oh God, is that the sun coming up? Number five, Towers of Agazba. This one's all about rebuilding civilization on a mysterious island. As parents, we're basically doing that every day after our kids tornado through the house. The game lets you build, explore, and cultivate life in this massive open world. Think about it. You can actually create something without finding glitter in it three weeks later. The visuals are stunning with environments that range from dense forests to sprawling landscapes and somehow still look less chaotic than your kid's art wall. You've got creative freedom to build and shape the world. Unlike at home where your creative freedom extends to choosing which color sippy cup to use today. It's hitting PC and PS5 this November in early access, which means it's probably about as complete as your last cup of coffee. Coming in at number four, the one I teased earlier, Path of Exile 2. The free-to-play action RPG that understands skill trees more complicated than your kids, they've completely revamped the original campaign and added a new one, both leading to the same endgame content. Kind of like how all parenting strategies eventually lead to bribing with snacks. The gem socket system got an overhaul, giving you more freedom in building your character's abilities and thank the gaming gods, all your microtransactions from the original carryover. Finally, something that doesn't become useless after your kid grows out of it. Plus, you don't pay for power, just cosmetics, which is nice since your actual budget is already going to endless supplies of juice boxes and band-aids. Dropping on PC, Playstations, and Xbox on November 15th. Number three, hits us with Slitterhead. And let me tell you, after finding mysterious stains on your walls, no horror game can truly shock you anymore. From the twisted mind behind Silent Hill comes this survival horror action blend that's all about monsters hiding in plain sight. You know, like when your toddler's being suspiciously quiet, these creatures mimic human forms, which is less impressive once you've seen your kid perfectly impersonate an angel in front of the grandparents five minutes after demolishing the kitchen. The combat's faster paced than your average horror game probably because they understand that parents don't have time for slow, creeping tension. We get enough of that waiting for the results of, what did you just put in your mouth? It's bringing its brand of body horror and artistic gore to PlayStation's Xbox series and PC on November 8th. Perfect for those nights when your own horror stories of what I found in the toy box need a break. Rolling in at number two, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 is here to help you escape reality in the most beautiful way possible. The entire world is mapped out in stunning detail, letting you fly anywhere, which is perfect for those days when you want to be literally anywhere else besides cleaning up after arts and crafts time. The visual fidelity is mind-blowing. Even the low-res areas pulled from Google Maps look better than your attempts at cleaning fingerprints off the TV screen. They've got new prop planes for buzzing over small cities, enhanced AI for better flight dynamics, and enough realism to make you feel like you're actually escaping the chaos of family life for a few precious hours. Whether you play it on the I actually know how planes work mode or the I just want to pretend I'm on vacation settings like I do, it's landing on Xbox Series and PC November 19th. And finally, here's number one. Mario and Luigi Brothership. Nintendo's taking our favorite plumber siblings to space because apparently dealing with Bowser on Earth wasn't enough of a challenge. It's got all the quirky humor and turn-based combat the series is known for. Plus that special Nintendo magic that makes it perfect for gaming 
while pretending to listen to your kid's detailed explanation of why dragons would make better pets than dogs. The story might not blow your mind, but after reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar for the 478th time, you're probably okay with that. The tag team combat and strategic gameplay are perfect for those short gaming sessions between diaper changes, and let's be honest, watching these brothers work together is way more satisfying than trying to get your own kids to share toys. Launching exclusively on Nintendo Switch November 7th, because Nintendo knows parents need portable gaming options for survival. And hey, because I know you're all about that bonus content, unlike your kids' one last story requests, let's talk about Planet Coaster 2. Coming to PC on November 6th, this sequel is all about building bigger, better theme parks with enhanced coaster design and deeper park management. They've added improved terrain manipulation, which is great because we already have plenty of experience managing chaos and preventing disasters. Think of it as channeling all those safety dad instincts into creating the most insane death traps. Virtually, of course. It's like baby-proofing your house, but in reverse, and nobody actually gets hurt. And there you have it, fellow gaming parents. Another lineup of games will try to squeeze in between parent-teacher conferences and emergency searches for lost stuffed animals. If I missed any games you're excited about, drop them in the comments below. You know, if you can type with one hand while holding a baby in the other. And hey, if you enjoyed this video and want more content for parents who are just trying to survive both the digital and real-world chaos, smash that like button harder than your kid smashes the TV remote. Subscribe if you haven't already. It's easier than getting your kids to eat their vegetables and way more satisfying. Special shout out to all of you watching this while hiding in the bathroom during your lunch break or at 3 a.m. because the baby finally fell asleep. You're the real MVPs of multitasking, gaming and parenting like absolute champions. Until next time, keep your controllers charged and your coffee stronger than your kids' willpower during a candy store meltdown. This is Gamer Dads reminding you that while you might not be saving the world in real life, you're definitely someone's hero. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I hear someone trying to microwave an action figure.